YouTube, what's up, man? Weekend League was great this weekend. I wound up going 23-0, and and then I ran into this game. This was the game of the week. This was the game of my Weekend League. I played all 25 games straight, and you guys can watch that live on Twitch. By the way, make sure you guys take the time to follow all my social medias because I'll be doing tons of giveaways as the Madden season dwindles down. And, of course, to get into Madden 21, all this end-of-the-year stuff is really just building up for the new game, although I still love playing this game, and I hope you guys do too. And, and you know, I've watched a lot of Madden YouTube just trying to make my YouTube game stronger, and a lot of mine... I have more of a need to try to help you guys get better. I want to see you guys all get take your game to the next level so you can enjoy it that much more, much like I do. You know, that's kind of my goal with YouTube. I've seen a lot of people, a lot more people, a lot more animated than me, a lot more, you know, playful, this, that, and the third. But, I mean, I this game, it's my life. So I take it really seriously, and being good at it is my life, not necessarily playing it and opening packs and all that. So for me... My angle is just helping all you guys get better at the game, and hopefully you guys can enjoy it that much more if you continue to get better, and we're going to have some fun along the way. But before we get into this video, I want to show you guys my team that I went ahead and I and I played these many games weekend league. I played all the games straight. This is my team. I didn't change too much. I want to go ahead and show you guys what I did do, and we're going to start with defense here. Um... Uh, it's pretty much the same team. The one thing I did pick up was Golden, golden Ticket Jalen Ramsey. Take a look at him. I mean, it, Ramsey and Pat Pete have been my favorite corners pretty much all year. And uh, it, it, there's no surprise. You guys know uh, 99 pretty much across the board. 6-1, um, I just like Jalen Ramsey. I like Pat Pete. I felt like they've always been the best corners in the game. I love big bodies. Pause. But I, I just I feel like in Madden, they all run fast. They all can kind of tackle. They all can kind of play zone. Uh, might as well get the tallest, biggest bodies out there. They can reach more footballs. They can reach more running backs to tackle them. They can dive further. Their player model's just bigger. Gives you a better chance to hit, and you have more weight. I'm just such an adamant on just the height of players. If everybody was 6'4", I would pick them. Uh, that's because, and that's why I have Calvin Johnson and Taylor Mays as safety. Now, I activate my two safeties, Calvin Johnson and Taylor Mays. Uh, well, if you guys realize, they're not starting. And there's a couple reasons why I don't start them. One, if you ever play those demons on special teams that have the enforcers running down the field and killing your fullback or killing your your kick returner, it's because they're the backup strong safety, backup free safety. So naturally, I will have that happening every time. My two enforcers will be running it down on special teams. Also, um, a lot of times in my... Um, pass defenses, whether it be nickel, whether it be dollar, whether it be one four six, uh, whatever it is. Now I know you can do this. Some of you guys are gonna be you can put in the specialist sub package. You can only put strong safeties there. You can't put free safeties there. So I would put Calvin there and I wouldn't have to worry about this. But the one thing most of the time I auto sub Calvin Johnson in at linebacker. I like having Taylor Mays and Calvin Johnson playing linebacker because if you guys know this year Calvin Johnson, Taylor Mays, uh, or linebackers in general cannot jump for the football. So if I put my lurkers at linebacker, all the other DBs on the field can jump for the football. So now everybody on your field can jump and get interceptions in your pass, def pass, pass sets, whether it's 2-4-5, nickel 3-3-5, three, 1-4, three, whatever your pass defense you prefer to use, now everybody on your field can jump and catch the ball. So when I run 1-4-6 or 2-3-6, I definitely want to have Taylor Mays and Calvin Johnson at linebacker and pending them at backup one they're not on the field to start and i can just sub them in a lot easier it makes my pregame adjustments that much faster and that much easier um the only time i would run taylor mays and, and calvin johnson at safety is if someone was running the ball a lot or in my run defense my three four sets things of that nature i will i will and then in that case i would just have to sub them in as safety because as you see brian dawkins and night train lane would be there now um, and like you said, if I do, when I do run them at, at linebacker, I definitely use, uh, at this point, everybody's interchangeable, but I like using Mike Evans once again, a big body. I mean, because he's six, five, if I put him as safety, he's pretty good. Uh, along with night train can play anywhere. But like I said, at this time of the year, all these cards are 99 speed. So they're pretty much interchangeable where they can play with lockdown and coach Madden. Everybody has 99 zone. You guys watch. I primarily play zone. Uh, especially against the pass. But once again, I still have Miles Garrett, um, Shazier, and Deion Jones. Um, offense is still the same. I did get Walter Payton. I did get Walter Payton, so that's good. 
uh, give me a 99 speed running back. The reason I like Walter Payton, I mean, I like the way he holds the ball. I don't know. Hey, it just looks cool. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I like cool shit, you know. So Walter Payton holding the ball, I like it. Um, once again, 99 speed, 98 agility, 99 acceleration. Uh, pretty much unreal, really. With the so he was a little upgrade from my man uh, Chris Johnson, who I still have in the lineup. You need somebody every once in a while. You need a you can't give somebody a bunch of carries in a row. But Walter Payne's gonna get running back job. Once again, two two wide receivers highlight or uh, activated and. Michael Vick, I use Ultimate Legend Michael Vick. If you guys haven't watched the other videos, make sure you do. Uh, I use him because he has an Eagles jersey, pretty much. Uh, ultimately, I would probably use the Golden Ticket for Hot Rod Master, but I have Joystick, have Roaming Dead Eye, have Fast Break, and Escape Artist. I feel like those are the most essential things that I use on my Michael Vick. Uh, the market is really low right now, so if you don't have one of these cards, you can buy pretty much every card that I showed on offense. My offense has no Golden Tickets. Everybody's affordable that I use. Uh, I, I really think these cards are interchangeable. I don't think it's that big a deal. I don't think there's that much of a difference between the cards. The biggest thing at this point of the year is the difference between the cards is their height. Everybody's fast. Everybody can tackle. Everybody has every ability. At the tallest people, that's pretty much how I feel. Uh, Moss, it's Calvin Johnson. I want this Terrell Owens to come out. I could, uh, you know, buy some more packs and go get my Julio Jones back. I gave him away. But I feel like once Calvin or once T.O. comes out, I'll put him in there. He'll get four abilities. I'll rock him with the Eagles. Eagles theme. He's just going to be an absolute god. Uh, that's pretty. That and Sean Taylor are pretty much the only cards I'm waiting for. Uh, let me know what cards you guys are waiting for. Those are probably the only two cards I can think of that I'm waiting for. But like I said, I was 23 and 0 going into this game. I had played 28 straight games. Uh, of weekend league, I played them all in one stream, banged them out. So uh, let's get into this gameplay. I'll tell you, this guy didn't deserve to be on my field at all. But you know how weekend league is? Sometimes they just make you fight. All right, so we're 23 and 0 going into this game. We're playing ISO Jody. Now you know, as you the further you get down a weekend league, the sweatier the games get. That's how it's going to be, and I don't want to fumble that much, especially in a tight game. So Blast is something I run all the time. If you guys watch this, I throw a little hitch against his Blitz 8 people. But I run Blast all the time, and there you see me sliding, playing a little more safe, but it's very risky. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this offense for any of you guys, really, uh, if you're trying to win. You're trying to have fun. It's the end of the year. It's awesome. Uh, and I definitely have a lot of highlights with Michael Vick, and, and embarrassing people is, is what I do on stream. And as you see here, a little read option to Walter Payton, the new running back that I picked up. Uh, he's great. Uh, I like the I like how agile he is. I like how he's able to get in and out of uh, different running lanes, and he's been very good for me so far. But right there, a uh, little fat-footed. You know, you not when you switch running backs. I told you guys they move different all the time. Different running backs move differently. Right there, I move up, hit the little curl route to get inside the five-yard line. The reason I do run blast though is because short yardage is so good. Vic was a little tired, so I gave Christian Okoye a handoff uh, just to you know get Vic's energy up a little bit. Bang, easy, easy drive, right? First game, I want to go 24 and 0. This is the first game or first drive right down the field, seven nothing. He's running a little stretch. He's one of these guys. Great job right here tackling everybody. But what's different about this stretch is, yeah, he's got the no huddle and he's got the shooter McGavin on the backside. He's going to snap, just shuck this. I didn't expect it. I actually was clicking on Pat Pete, thinking I was clicking on a linebacker to stop the run. Got him all the way out the play. So I got RPO slanted for a touchdown to Randy Moss. So we'll get that one back. You go see with a little blast. You'll see as the tight, the, the tighter this game gets, the less I'm going to run blast just because I'm afraid of those fumbles. Right there, I'll throw the corner route because I know he has to go back and guard that deep post. Uh, just trust that he's going to do that. Let's get blast. You see that boy Clowney. You don't want to run into him too many times. Next play, we go a little out route. They don't give me the animation, of course. Uh, now he goes into a little three-man rush. And right there, we get out of there. Michael Vick does. He's clicking all over. And we're able to pick up a first down on third down. Uh, he goes to a three-man rush, and he does makes it obvious that it's a three-man rush. And that will come into play later in the game as I pick up a nice run over there on the blast. You see, I don't want to run it back-to-back -back plays at all. Um, and next play we run in here with Walter Payton. Just get out of there. Get a little 10-yard touchdown with Walter. Easy. Just too easy, easy, easy drive so far. And we're able to go ahead and pick up uh, 14 points. And we're, we're killing this. We are absolutely killing this stretch. 
He goes for a stretch again. He throws RPO. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how to stop this. I'm labbing in the game. Man under did not work. But he got a legal man downfield. Except that we get him to third down. He goes five wide. Literally throws it in my face. But I didn't expect this. So he completes it. So we'll remember that for later in the game. That's his first read. Five wide. And he no huddles. And you know what a demon's going to do in five wide. They no huddle. And then they audible. You got to be ready for the screen. I try to click on Clowney and pick it off. At least tackle him. Not able to get out there. And he picks up a couple yards. So. First pass play he showed me has been, oh, well, there's the RPO again. I don't know how to stop. But the first pass play was five wide, chuck a streak. Got to be ready for that later in the game. Once again, he's just wearing a stretch out with Walter Payton. He has Gale Sayers, and Walter Payton somehow gets out of there. Tell me you've given up a run play like that. Walter Payton gets up out of there. Goes for a fake right here. I'm able to click on Slay, get him in position, and click off. Gets the fumble. We can't turn. So he went for a fake. So that gives me one point. This one point that he didn't get is going to come into play the entire rest of the game. And, and, and it's going to be just a lesson for you guys about chasing points, going for extra points, and how they impact the entire game. Right here, it's closing in the first half. I want to get some points on the board. Hit this corner route to Tory Holt. Post flag elite. They will never, ever drop a corner route if they get their hands on it. Right here, I run first down. There's 30 seconds. I have no timeouts here, boys. So I'm going to run right here, and I'm going to go ahead and spike. And I want to no huddle to a spike, and I want to let all the clock go down. I'm going to take my field goal. We are 23-0 and right now, um, and so we cannot risk uh, messing around, throwing an interception, not getting points here. Plus, because he didn't get that point uh, when he went for the fake, this field goal actually put me up a touchdown. He cannot tie with a field goal anymore or put me up a whole four points. So that feels good going into, over, uh, going into halftime, getting this field goal. Uh, that's why I ran right there. No huddle went for the spike. Uh, like I said, if we were playing all mad or, or salary cap, there's runoff. So that probably would not be a realistic opportunity. But on Mutt, you're, it's very lenient with the time before half. Almost like old Maddens where you can go up and down the field pretty easily. But I feel okay. He's got two touchdowns. One on an RPO slant and one on a Walter Payton run through five people for a touchdown. So when your opponent has fluky touchdowns, you kind of just got to live with them. You can't get down on yourself, even though, uh, like I said, there were two fluky plays. But I'm still in control of the game. I feel great. I feel like I'm a better player. The longer the game goes on, the better my defense will get. As we see, once again, goes for a stretch uh, in the backfield. We're all over Walter Payton. Need bodies to tackle these running backs now. No huddle demon. Just no huddles. Gets right to the same play. And he snaps it. I got five people watching the RPO, and that because of that, Walter Payton gets busy. We're able to catch him, though. That's why you like that 99 speed. We got Night Train other at the, at the other corner. Once again, on another stretch, Jalen Ramsey gets off a block, makes a big play there for me. Get him to a second and 13. Another run. There's Pat Pete. Make sure he doesn't spin. He spins. He jukes. I mean, at some point, we need a fumble here. He actually calls timeout to save his energy. Third and eight, and Calvin Johnson baptizes Walter Payton. No fumble because he had called timeout, got his stamina back. The stamina is important, but he wasted a second-half timeout. And once again, kicks that field goal, still down one point. Remember that. Goes to the three-man rush right there. He actually blitzes a linebacker. Gets me in the backfield. You're not running from Jamal Adams. Second and 24. Right here, I'm able to roll out. Get a couple yards with Vic on the scramble. Got to get down. That's like back-to-back -back hits with Vic. He got sacked, got wrapped up third and 13. We're going to go for a corner route, but he covers it. Let's try to get our couple yards with Vic again. Three straight hits on Vic. He's going to fumble the ball. And, of course, it goes for six. Well, he fell down, which was a little wild. But he did fall down um, and then got the touchdown with Walter Payton. So, uh, a RPO touchdown, a broken play touchdown. And he goes for two here. And this is what I mean. He goes to try to chase these points to go up a full seven. He does not get it. So now he's only up five points. It's going to come into play that one, as I juke him right there, get out of bounds with Michael Vick, that one fake field goal he went for is going to cost him. He goes to this three-man rush, and I'm able to just have time in the pocket. Um, You get so used to rolling out, rolling out, rolling out. Sometimes you just have to trust your pocket, especially when he's only rushing three here. Man covers. We have good, good pocket, but just really nothing open. He had a good lurk on that play. Really covered everything. Get to a second and 13. Give it to Mike, to uh, Walter Payton. So when they play these dollar and they play these one four sixes, sometimes you got to give the inside zone. So I went and got Walter Payton. This time he blitzes everybody. We're able to get out of the pocket, but can't really run from Roquan as he wraps me up for a short gain. Second and six. We're going to get sacked right here. Bad play call. Get me to a third and long here. And he's going to get Derwin James, and then he's going to have a bad lurk right there. Able to hit Torrey Holt. Back of the end zone. Baja. And we go for two. 
because he just didn't get a two and this two point conversion is going to put me up three if I can get it. So this all just comes back to that fake field goal he didn't get. And of course, for two, we're going to run blast and we're going to get in right there. Boom. Easy. Two point conversion. Now I'm up three where even if he would have kicked his points and didn't chase that, that two point conversion on his last touchdown. I would have only been up one point here. He could have clocked out the game and kicked the three. But instead, he chased his points in the third quarter. My philosophy with two-point conversions is I don't go for them unless I need to. Now, that situation, I needed to to give me a chance to be up by three. But if I was in the lead that much, I wouldn't have went for two. Uh, just always count on, on the last possession going for two. And there goes Walter Payton getting damn near in the field goal range now. We're going to see him milking a lot of clocks. Same stretch RPO every play pretty much. I feel like we've done a good job, but he still has points. There's Taylor Mays. That's that 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 height, the big body, just wrapping up Walter Payton. Once again, Deion Jones in the backfield, fourth and 17 for his weekend league life. He already used the timeout. So let's go out here. We're going to go on 146. He's going to come out and empty. Remember early in the game his one play that he, he ran the pass. So I'm going to watch that no matter what I'm watching that. The left receiver, I'll man up the right slot so he can't see me on that side. I still have a mid-read in the middle of the field, and now he audibles the bunch. You know, I said, that's okay. He can audible a bunch. I don't, I don't really care too much. He's not a bunch guy. And he chucks a streak to Randy Moss in traffic. What? We got to watch that again. Just literally backs up, chucks a streak, streak specialist. He didn't, I, I mean, he caught it. You know, he caught it to tie the game. He's in field goal range now. I'm not going to use my timeouts because uh, I don't want him to score a touchdown. He's going to run the same play, stretch RPO. Taylor Mays is all over it, like we've been doing all game. Uh, so I'm still going to let him the clock run. I don't want to give him too much time to get a touchdown. I'm cool with a tie game. I feel like I'm better than this guy. I feel like if the game extends to a long period of time, I'm going to win. So overtime, although not the best thing in the world, uh, for me, I'm okay with it. Uh, but... If I get a big loss here, I'm definitely going to call a timeout to try to get a ball ball back. If I get him to a third and long, uh, he's going to run the same stretch as he does right there. And we're all over it. Patrick Peterson, Calvin Johnson, Taylor Mays, boom. Third and long, I'm going to call a timeout. And you notice he's going to come out in this strong wing. I remember this play. Uh, the, in strong wing, if you guys know, it has the bot play of the year. Um it has an angle route, it has a post route, it has a corner route. The bot player of the year. He's going to quick snap it, and I'm going to lurk it because I'm Calvin Johnson. I'm going to go down here, and I just wasn't close enough. Got a terrible animation, and there goes Walter Payton to the crib. So, now we're down. Uh, I was up by three, and now we're down by four. We need a touchdown. But as I say all the time, this is why they watch. This is why you're subscribed. This is why you hit the like button. This is why they tune in. Live, twitch.tv slash dub dot. This is what they do. Now, listen, 46 seconds, two timeouts, no runoff in Mutt, plenty of time. Dagger is the best play in the game for this. Um, Want to get big chunks, either corner routes, crossing routes. I will throw something underneath if I can get 10 yards plus. Uh, the first play is the biggest deal, man. You just want a positive play. And if you're going to give me 10 yards up the gut, I got to take it with Vic. Timeout immediately. Why? Because I can control the other plays going forward. I know the clock is running now. Plus, when you will call a timeout, you can do your pass protections. You can do your hot routes. As you see me double teaming somebody, making sure I don't get uh, instant shedded by anybody. And I'm able to hit this crossing route over here to Randy Moss. As you see me swerve back to the quarterback to get that big body in front of the DB. So there's no chance of that getting picked off. Another reason why I love tall wide receivers. Uh, right here, I'm going to try. I've noticed he's just been in cover four. I'm going to try to put a deep post, flip it so he becomes my inside receiver, Randy Moss. And I want to put Ingram on an out route to try to hold down that outside corner. We're going for it all right here. That's what I know it's cover four. We're going for everything. Back left corner of the pylon. Randy Moss, post specialist, boom, drops it. I felt like that could have been the dot of the year. Um, but like I said, I, I mean, he caught his in triple coverage. Why can't I catch that post in triple coverage? But we took a shot now. Now let's take our time, try to put a good play out here. Once again, that stops the clock. That's why I took that timeout on that earlier play because the clock was running. Now, who knows what's going to happen in other plays. you got to make sure you save as much time as possible in these situations. Once again, double team in the left. I don't know why he didn't get te double teamed, but he shedded me, Khalil Mack. Spy gets in there. I called my timeout. 23 seconds left. No timeouts. I'm 40 yards away from pay dirt. Uh, this is looking like a corner route, a crossing route, and then a couple shots into the end zone. You could take some shots into the end zone. We shall see. But 
right now I just want to go ahead and, and get some plays and want to get out of bounds. I can still spike. Anything in bounds, I pretty much have to spike, even if it's not a first down. We're going to roll out, laser this corner route in here to Torrey Holt. Boom. And what that's going to do is get me at the 17-yard line. Torrey Holt has activated double me. So I can chuck it to him, but I'll tell you that, that just doesn't work for me anymore. I hate doing it. But here we go. Um, I want you guys to watch Randy Moss on this play. I want you to watch the dagger crossing route um, as because I want you to watch what happens to it. As it goes to the back of the end zone, it stops. It doesn't get open. I try to hit Torrey Holt on this end route, but he gets out of bounds. Now, I want you to remember that dagger route. Now, I, I saw that, you know, and I said, you know what? He wasn't an option to throw to. What I want to do this play, I'm going to switch the dagger route to the, to the hot routed post. He has slot apprentice, so I can put him on that post. Now, that post is not going to run into the back of the end zone. That post is going to be an option for me to, for me to throw to. And because of that, boom, we hit X, touchdown, lead, six seconds left. That is why they watch. There's a difference between the dagger route and the post route. We take the lead, go up three with six seconds left. Uh, now we got to do is stop the run here. We got to stop the stretch. But somehow he comes out in five wide. And I'm happy about that. We sack him, get him called a timeout. Five wide again. Throws it up. GG's in the chat. The kid can't pass. He doesn't know what to do in that situation. Um, so I said that was great. Great way to get to 24 and 0. I was able to win the next game to get a 25 and 0 weekend league. Like I said, make sure you guys follow these social medias. I appreciate all you guys' support. Subscribe and hit the like button. I want to keep pumping out these gameplays for the rest of Madden 20.